Hi, and welcome back to The Secret Life of Parkinson's. I'm Jessica Krauser, and I'm here with Brian Baker. Hello, Jessica. Hi. We have Marlene Vandenbrink. She's on Zoom from Canada. Marlene, welcome. Thank you. Uh, Marlene is a young onset Parkinson's patient, and she just recently had um, DBS. And like I said, she lives in Canada, and she reached out to us and you know, wanted to share her journey because it's we talk about DBS all the time, but it's just from a United States standpoint, and things can be very different when you get into other countries. So um, Marlene, thank you so much for reaching out to us, and I'm so glad that we were able to coordinate this and, and get this scheduled. And we can't wait to hear your story. So um, if you want to just take a couple minutes and share a little bit about who you are and when you were diagnosed and uh, then your journey to DBS. Okay, so I was um, I was diagnosed eight years ago already, believe it or not. I know it goes fast. In 2015, um, with young onset, I was 47 at the time. So, um, yeah, I started taking the dopamine um, antagonists. I mm -hmm. think that's what they're called, right? And then um, not long after, I started on to levodopa or levocarb. So... Um, but yeah, then, um, I was going every six months, I guess, to my doctor anyways, to just check it. And, um, the last time I went in last year in March, I believe she said, okay, I was getting quite a bit of dyskinesia from the side effects from mm -hmm. the medication. So she just said, um, yeah, okay. That's bothersome to you. So she said, I'll refer you to a, um, for the DBS. So I was kind of like, okay, cause I heard about that. But, um, so I went, I had to wait a year to go to the doctor and the, see the DBS doctor. So then I did, uh, end up there and, um, yeah, that was this March actually March of this year. And then, um, in June I had the surgery already. Like it, it really came about quite quickly. I was really surprised that, um, that it did. And, um, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it didn't how, so, yeah. how much medication were you on beforehand? I took about six a day of the, the levo curve. Okay. And then, right. and so you took, it took a year though to get into, just to initially see a doctor that does DBS or? Yeah. Yes. She referred me to a doctor that did DBS surgery and that took, um, yeah, that wasn't until a whole year later which was kind of, I was, I was kind of okay with it because I, I don't know, I was a little nervous about the whole thing. Right. Mm -hmm. I was thinking about it and I was like, it's going to be a long ways off anyways. But um, anyway, so then I did, uh, yeah, I did go in March and I was really surprised that I had it in June already. Cause you know, I thought it would be quite a process to get this all uh, yeah. figured out, but yeah, I had it done already in June. So yeah, we've got, we've got quite, we've got a decent <laughs> following from, from Canada. And I know there's a gentleman that messages me every now and then. I think I thought he said his waiting. He's like waiting on th waiting three years to get it. Oh wow! Really? To get the DVD? Really? Out. Yeah. Oh, that's unfortunate. Yeah, I don't really, I don't really know how it works. Like I did, I never asked to get it done. I was just kind of waiting because I thought the medication was not doing too bad up until mm -hmm. then. I had a lot of dyskinesia, so I. Um, yeah, I didn't ask at all about it, and they su they suggested it, so I was like, sure, because I kind of thought it might be a good idea, right? Mm -hmm. So then, uh, yeah. So, so can you talk to us a little bit about the difference in the U.S. healthcare system and maybe the Canadian healthcare system, from at least from your point of view? Well, I think that you, you we, we don't really have the opportunity to shop around. Like you always say, do your research and check it all out, right? Like check your mm -hmm. doctor, do your research, but we don't. I don't find we have that as much here um, because we're just kind of referred to the doctor who's going to do it, right? And then, yeah, you get it. You, he sits down with you for about the first consultation um, when you when you pass all the qualifications. He sits down with you and you, um, yeah, you. Um, he explains it to you what he's going to do mm. and everything, and then. Yeah, he said, I got some openings coming right up. So he said, do you want to do it? And I said, well, I guess. Yeah, it's kind of like a no-brainer, right? Like I said, um, yeah. So you can't really shop around, I don't think. Like, yeah, I don't know. Like, I, if I didn't want him, I don't know what I would have done then, right? Like, um, hmm. I, I guess. Interesting. And do you it's get just to, kind of weird. Do you get to pick your device? 
or do they pick that for you as well? No, he showed me the Boston Scientific one. He said, this is the one I use and okay. blah, blah, blah. And he explained it to me. So I said, sounds good, right? Like, I don't know anything really about what do I know, right? So mm-hmm. I just basically spent a lot on his uh, recommendations with all that. And um, yeah, then the other thing I noticed too, um, I'm listening to your podcast, like I had it all done in the same surgery. It's called bilateral, right? Yeah. Like both sides chest implant was all done the same day which was quite different than in the states i find well, right because you had three is that right brian i did have three and that's the way the cleveland clinic does it now we have um we talked to a couple other people here recently that have had the the both sides of the brain done at the same time and the battery done on a separate time but mm-hmm. but neither i we haven't yeah. heard all three of it at the same time except one individual he's looking into it and i think he was talking about it might be all at the same time. So we wanted to still definitely pick your brain on what was, I mean, I know you don't have an experience of what it was like another way, but how was yeah. it getting all three done at once? Like what was that difficult? Was it trying I, on your body? Like, I think I, I think it's probably preferable to get them all done at the same time, just because you're in such a situation and you're mm-hmm. so traumatized as it is you might as well just go through it once right mm-hmm. um so yeah like i had um i thought i was going to be awake it was really weird i didn't have a lot of information they told me i was going to be awake and then i went down to the surgery and they said um, i said well i'm starting to get heart palpitations now <laughs> i was just gonna and uh, he said okay you know blah 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 and then uh next thing you know i was waking up and it was about two hours later and I saw the time on the, uh, and I was like, I think they had done the one side already. And then um, he said, okay, now we're gonna do the other side. Cause I just remember them doing drilling into the other side. So anyways, I, I went through that and um, it was kind of a blur, right? You're sort mm-hmm. of out of it, kind of half coming out of your anesthesia. Cause, and yeah, they shaved my head in there and I didn't really remember a whole lot about what other than the real drilling in your head is quite allowed but uh yeah then they put me to sleep and then they did the part in my chest i guess so then when it was all over i was good wow. yeah so it, it, i started at i think eight in the morning and i was i was out of there back by two or something in the afternoon already so did you just have yeah. to stay over one night in the hospital I stayed two nights because I had, uh, I was quite nauseous from the anesthesia. Mm -hmm. I was really, yeah. yeah, So I, I ended up staying two nights, but yeah, other than that, the night before I went in, of course, and then, um, yeah, had my surgery and two nights and that was it. Then I went home. So (laughs) yeah. Now did you get, did you get the honeymoon phase or the honeymoon period with where you had like no symptoms? Yeah. That's. That's yeah, I did. And I, did, I didn't know, like, am I supposed to take my medication now? Or because I don't feel I didn't feel I needed it. And I wasn't sure what I was doing. Nobody really told me any of that. Like, what did you find? I continued the medication, you know, but like I said, there was a there was about seven day period where like, I was like, oh, I'm going to gut that bathroom now. I'm going to paint this. I'm going to do this. And then oh. I started making plans <laughs> and then, then it all came crashing back down. So, yeah, so yeah, no, for sure. So what did your follow-up look like? I mean, and, and I'll ask Brian too, the same thing. Like you said, you, you kind of went home and didn't really know what to do. Like when did you get back in touch either with that doctor or your, your general, your, your general neurologist? Well, that was also another different thing. I never did see the surgeon again that did mm-hmm. my brain stimulation. He just, I guess they just do it here. And the only thing he said was if you have any issues with your wound you can come back and see me hmm. but other than that I never saw him again and uh, I had my I had my daughter as a contact person mm-hmm. right for during the surgery and after so he just he called her and he said yeah it's all done your mom was a champ and um yeah it was good it would all worked out well and I, I never did see him anymore it was really kind of weird but I guess that's the way they they, I guess I, they are more experts in, yeah. you know, just doing the surgery. They right. just do that. And then you have to deal with your other doctor, the, um, the one that does the programming, I guess, to, uh, do the rounds. So yeah, then I had to follow up. It said in six weeks for my first, um, programming appointment. Mm-hmm. 
which um, I called them at about four weeks. And she said, yeah, we actually do it a little sooner now. She said, we do it in four weeks. She goes in the States, they do it after two. It was kind of funny because I was like, okay, so yeah, they really kind of follow the lead of, I think, what the States does mm-hmm. and a lot of that stuff. So she said it used to be six weeks, but so she got me in. And then, um, yeah, I just um, met with uh, three I guess it was a nurse and I don't know who the other two were, but they, it wasn't my doctor or anything. He mm-hmm. just, and yeah. Now, do you have a rep when you go to your programming sessions, do you have a rep or somebody from Boston scientific there as well? No, I don't, I don't know. Maybe she is. I don't know who the lady yeah, was that was doing all the programming, but like, you know, they don't really tell you all that. Right. So what was your time frame Like, what did you, um, when you got home from the hospital, then what was your next steps? So we did the the first surgery in June, the second surgery in July, the the implant, the battery implanted in August, turned on at the end of August. So it was like program. two to four weeks. Yeah, and then it was every four weeks for the first three or four sessions. How many times have you every gone four? back? Yeah, just about every four weeks. Okay, because I'm uh, I'm currently every two weeks I get it turned up. Yeah, I mean I can With, I do you, I have access to mine and I've had access to mine since the first programming to turn up down to a certain point. Um, like a remote control. Yeah. Re- do you have a remote? I do. I think I have. Well, I have the Boston Scientific. It's probably so the I same I one. Saw, I have the remote like um, Steve Bar- yeah. Brandenburg had. And he was showing that uh, session where he was able to turn it off. So, yeah, I do have the remote. And they um, they just call me, actually, from the hospital at my house now. The only time I went in was for my first session. They just call me, and she walks me through turning it up a few dials every time. Really? Mm. You're weird. I know. That's interesting. It was so really for, for mine, I whenever I go in to see the neurologist now, he, had, he brings it up on a laptop, and they can – tweak it and move it and do all that stuff that they need to do. They'll say, Hey, what are your symptoms like? How the things moving? And they can, they'll move, they'll move the, the leads around or whatever. And yeah, I, I know, like, I don't know what to think of. Well, I'm sure they're doing it. Okay. But I just find it's kind of weird that, you know, um, now I did say I'd like to come in sometime because I, I've only went the one time and that's when they did all the, you know, the initial programming and now they just, just keep turning it up. And I said, how far does it go? And she said, till about three, like a level three, I'm, I'm <laughs> going up by 0.2 each time. I don't even know what that means. Do you, yeah. Do you- it goes up to level 12, I think is a top, um, which I, what I was told was you'll never see that high because that's just too much. Um, right. Like you said, I can, like if my, like for example, if my right side's bothering me a little bit or whatever, I can go up and t- turn mine up to a certain point myself. And, you do that? Oh, yeah. I can just go and take a remote and program it up a little bit. But they, they put parameters on there where I can't go past certain. Oh. Hmm. Like okay. lockdown. All right. So are you on any medications <laughs> again or are you still figuring that out? I'm gradually weaning off of my medication. Um so yeah it's kind of hard it really it really messes me up every time i get it programmed like um i found that like you know they turn it up and then i'm very dyskinetic for a few days Mm -hmm. and then uh, it settles down and i yeah i have to i have to take my medication kind of cut it in half and try different things with it like it's very it's a real roller coaster that's what the nurse said to me she goes well it's going to be a real roller coaster i said well yeah okay like so are so, they letting you just figure that out or is your doctor kind of working with you on what to do with the medication or they just say slowly wean yourself off? Yeah, it's very much up to me. I think, um, I asked her once I said, should I be taking medication? Like the last time I got it turned up, I said, I, I don't feel I need it at all. And uh, I said, like, you can't just quit it cold mm-hmm. turkey, I think. Right. So she said, no, you can take a couple, like just maybe a quarter of a pill a couple times a day just to keep some in your system if you want but and then it yeah then it does um kind of ease off like the 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 symptoms come back so yeah. i have to take a few a bit more right so how are you feeling in general are you happy you did it yeah i am yeah 
I'm sorry, I'm not really listening. Um, yeah, I am really, I am glad I did. I think it's going to be really good for sure. Um, I don't know what else was I going to say. Not really. I don't know. No, I don't think there was anything else I had to say. I just, yeah, I really, I was really glad I was able to get it done this quickly. And it was, you know, of course it's all free here. So, which is really amazing, right? Because I have no idea what it would cost me, but I'm like, yeah, that's just one of those things yeah. that you have to. So that's yeah. um, an interesting point because I wonder if it's like you said you were, you're eight years in right now, right? It, from your diagnosis. Um, yes. Like if there's a, a point in time where like neurologists there would say like, okay, I'll recommend it versus, you know, you mentioned somebody reached out to you and said they're on a waiting list for three years. I wonder if that's why. Well, like, yeah. Not... And the, the, my question is, it's, you know, there's a lot of that, a lot that goes into it. So you have, you know, your lifestyle, your age, your symptoms all go, go into play. So how do you determine, right. you know, who's going to get it, who yeah. didn't get it, who can go on a waiting list, who needs it now and stuff like that. Yeah. So. Well, yeah, that's what I mean. I mean, there's a lot of people with Parkinson's here too. And I mean, it's yeah. all, we all, it's all free. So we're all like, sign me up thinking, mm -hmm. right? You kind of think, I don't know how they pick and choose or yeah. what they, the criteria would be. But anyways, I feel kind of fortunate. I'm 54 now. And I, I do think it's better to get it sooner rather than later. Mm -hmm. Right? Like mm -hmm. I, 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 I think it was really a good choice to have it done for sure. What, and um, what was yeah. your most troublesome symptom of Parkinson's that the DBS has helped with? I would say like the dystonia, my foot cramping, that mm -hmm. was kind of a bad one. And it hasn't done it at all, really. Like since that, that's been amazing. Like I know that is such a pain, you know, when you have that. So that and my tremor mm -hmm. and, um, rigidity like it really has helped everything i find that's good that's great yeah. you have a and nice success story yeah well i think so <laughs> at this point it's so far i know i was getting kind of nervous i'm like oh it's i didn't realize it was going to be such a, a long process to get it all yeah programmed. like nobody really said it's going to take like but i guess it's quite normal to take six months or even up to a year to get it right so i mm -hmm. know i'm trying to be patient but it is very hard after yeah. That's what, that I continue yeah. to tell everybody. It's a process because we all want that instant cure, 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 cure. Yeah, um, I know. Yeah. Instant gratification. Yeah, and it is. It's a process. I've been. It's been just over a year. I think we finally got mine. Even did they? I, you know, it's been good, but I think we every time I go in, I think we tweak it just a little bit better. <laughs> And you go in all the time to get it tweaked. Is no, that right? I mean I, I go. I haven't seen. I go in in October. So next month, um, I guess two months. Um, you go every two months? No, I go in oh. every six months. Oh. So. Oh, six months now. Yeah. So when because I first when I, when I first got it, it was every month, every four weeks I'd go in and get it tweaked and programmed, and they did that for like a month, month and a half. And once they get it, once they get it kind of settled into that good spot, they push it out to three months and six months, and then. Okay. Hopefully. And you've been, yeah, you've been quite happy with it, right? Oh, I would do it a thousand times over again. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> just, just to have that one week of normalcy was worth it. And you don't take any medication right now, is that right? Correct. Which I guess the oh. more I hear is, is that's that's kind of that's uncommon to be on no meds. Yeah, that, yeah, I know. Yeah. So, I mean, I'll just be happy to be able to cut back a lot, like even yeah. most of it. But, I mean, the dyskinesia was a getting to be a real problem for me, right? Because, yeah, I felt that was, yeah, I didn't know what was worse, right? Right. So. I think that's what people start to, to consider or question. Yeah. Itchy head too, Brian. Ah, oh, the itchy head. <laughs> I, I still get that. You need Melissa to tell oh, you. Yeah. Stop scratching your head. She's like, don't know, scratch I, it like this, Brian. Scratch it like this. I know, because you look like a... Look I know, like but you. sometimes my right side doesn't want to do the job it's supposed to do. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I think it's where they uh, did the surgery, right? It's, it's, it's yeah. very itchy yeah. always. So. <laughs> Anyways, yeah. Well, Marlene, Bye. thank you so much for reaching out and sharing your story. Uh, you might get a, a, a few comments because there are a lot of people in Canada who do watch and listen. So I know that this will be particularly interesting for them and uh they might have some questions but um really appreciate you opening up and taking the time 
to share your story. Okay. No problem. Thank you for all the uh, information you provide as well. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Well, in our last 30 seconds, I will leave you all with this. As always, please consult your doctor no matter what country you live in and making sure that you do your research uh, online or wherever you can find the information and see if DBS is right for you or continue your medication. But again, as always, you do you. Talk to your doctor and that's all I got. We'll see you next time. <laughs>